I don't know if you've heard, the action button is the hot new business for the iPhone 15 Pro, but I bet you're not using it to its full potential. And hey, if you don't have an iPhone 15 Pro, I've got you covered because there are nearly two ways to get the exact same functionality using the phone that you've already got. Oh, and then we're gonna talk about some of my favorite shortcuts because I haven't talked about shortcuts in years and people have no idea how insane some of them have gotten. The major complaint against the action button is that it only does one thing. And by default, well, that's true. I can toggle the silent mode by holding the button down and toggle it again by holding it once more. Uh, there's no double tap, there's no single press, there's no triple tap. It only does one of the six things that are enabled by default in the action button menu. But one of the options lets us use a shortcut and shortcuts are really, really powerful. Let me show you how we can make the action button a dynamic button. Okay. So I have set my action button right now to a shortcut that I call focus state. Check this out. If I hold down the action button, it turns on the flash to 100% brightness. Great, okay. Now check this out. If I go to sleep, and this turns on by default every time I get into uh, my bed, but if I turn on sleep mode and I push this button again, it still turns on the flashlight as you can see but you can't see the light behind my hands here on the table. And that's because the LED is at the very dimmest possible value, even dimmer than what you can do from within control center. So you know that one, that one out of four brightness check? This is lower than that. This is fantastic because in the middle of the night, I don't have to turn my screen on. I just grab my phone, I hold this button, and it sets it to just bright enough to be able to see in the dark. That's amazing. And that is the power of a dynamic toggle based on a state that we've set. So I'm gonna come into here and I'll show you how this is built out because it's really simple. Our shortcut says, hey system, iOS, get our current focus mode. So right now it's sleep, okay? Then it says dump that focus, mo th that focus mode into a text box. And so what the system is literally doing is writing S-L-E-E-P in raw text in this box. Then I've chosen to create a variable named focus with the value of whatever's in this field. So right now, this, val uh, this variable called focus is S-L-E-E-P, sleep. Then I do conditional logic. So I say, if my focus variable is sleep, and that's the value that it is currently, then toggle the flashlight to the very minimum brightness, which it did. But if it's anything other than sleep, toggle the flashlight onto the very max. So in any of my other profiles, it will be full brightness, but in the sleep mode, it's at the very lowest setting. Speaking of variables, it would be an exponential mistake to assume that robot vacuums don't have anything truly novel to offer nowadays, especially in the mid-price segment, because today's sponsor, Eufy, has done just that with their new Clean X8 Pro. It is uniquely designed to handle something that even the most expensive robot vacuums have ignored, and that's hair. Rather than move to an all-rubber brush that just doesn't, frankly, pick up hair at all, the X8 Pro retains a bristle brush, which, yes, does get hair tangles. However, a really clever detangling comb, in addition to the brush's V-shape, removes it as easily as it wraps. Furthermore, with two separate 4000 Pascal suction motors, the airflow generated by this twin turbine system is better than basically any RoboVac I've seen. At any price, making it very capable on carpets, which is famously a weak point for this category. Combine these features with a petite yet powerful self-empty station, shockingly good laser-based navigation that leaves straight, clean carpet lines, one of the best mapping modes I've seen that just nails room separation, inside of perhaps the most dependable robot vacuum app I've ever used, and well, I think Eufy is lined up to have a real success on their hands, especially at the $649 retail price. I did not expect this at all, but am a big fan already. And despite having more expensive vacuums lying around, I am choosing this for my carpeted upstairs rooms for the foreseeable future. Be sure to check out the Eufy Clean X8 Pro today with the link below. This is called Action Menu, and I can to toggle this to my action button just like I have my other one. I can come in here and I can click the camera. That will open up my camera app. I can say Action Menu, uh, Video. That'll open up the video settings in the video app. I can even mute and unmute my phone and check this out. As I press Unmute, the system unmutes, and if I tap it again, then it goes, do you want to mute? It knows the state of my mute toggle, so I don't have to guess, right? So I can press Mute, and it will mute once more. Then you can even run other shortcuts from this menu. So I have a shortcut called summary. 
And this is something I run every morning. It tells me the weather, it tells me what's on my calendar for the day, and then it also tells me certain tasks that I need to get finished by the end of the day. Okay, so how is this one built out? It's basically very similar. What I'm basically saying is, hey, let's create a text field called mute, a text field called unmute, and then what we're going to use is a third-party application called actions that is able to basically grab more information than the default variables from within shortcuts. And it's gonna say, is silent mode turned on? If silent mode is turned on, then we're gonna create a variable called mute command, and we are going to map it to mute. If it's not, then unmute. Then we go to this menu. That first part, all that does is that helps us identify which of these to display inside the menu. So we call that mute command. If we go down here, you'll see the mute command is a variable. So if my phone is muted, then it will say unmute. If my phone is unmuted, it will say mute. And then there are four options that I can choose from a list. And once I go into this list, it says, okay, summary. I can run a dynamic summary, which is that shortcut that shows me my summary for the day. I can, when I push camera, it opens photo. When I push video, it opens video. And if I want to mute or toggle mute, it just goes, hey, is the silent mode on? If it is on, turn it off. If it's not on, then turn it on. That's really all there is to it. It's quite simple. So let's make one together. This is going to be very neat because we will basically give the action button double press functionality. And let me show you how and why. So we're going to create a variable called curve all, C-U-R-V-O, you can name this anything. You could name it X, like basic algebra, to the current volume. So as soon as we run that, the system is gonna say, okay, what's the current volume on the iPhone? Let's name that volume current volume, okay? Then the shortcut is going to wait 600 milliseconds, and then it's going to check again and say, okay, is the volume now the same as the volume 600 milliseconds ago? And if the volume is the same, then it doesn't do anything. If it's not the same, then it will basically right now turn our media back to right where it was. This isn't going to be very helpful until we add additional variables. So let's add one. Uh, let's do a silent toggle because that's something that we'll want to do on our iPhones fairly often, at least me. So I can drag this and basically say, okay, if the volume doesn't change, then turn silent mode on. I don't want to do that. I want to toggle it. So I'm going to say toggle silent mode uh, and then you don't have to press on and off because it just toggles it on or off, okay. But then I can get my other variable here. So let's go in here and say, uh, well, frankly, I can, um, I can run action mode. So let's say action menu is a short, oh, sorry, you have to go into here and you do run shortcut, okay? So we're gonna say run a shortcut. And that shortcut is going to be action menu, that one I just showed you. So I'm gonna drag this underneath, and you can see it's kind of slightly indented, this system. So what's going to happen is it's going to grab the volume. 600 milliseconds is gonna pass. If the volume is not the same, it's going to open the action menu. If the volume is the same, then it's gonna to toggle silent mode. Okay, what's the point of this? Let me show you. We are going to go into settings here, and I am going to toggle this to action volume. And I have to spell this right. Volume. Okay, so now we're ready to rumble. If I hold the action button down and I don't do anything else, it's going to toggle silent mode, okay? But watch this. If I push this button and then quickly, within 600 milliseconds, push one of the other vol volume buttons to change the volume, it's gonna say, do you want to run this thing? And yeah, it's gonna pop up the other shortcut. So again, now I can hold down, it will toggle my mute on and off. If I do that and change the volume, it's gonna pull up the menu. So now you do have a double press on the action button. Isn't that sweet? Let me show you one more example. So we've talked about focus state, we've talked about menus, we've talked about volume. Let me do one more and this one is crazy. I named this one flippity doo dah. <laughs> this uses that same third party app, Actions, to get my current device orientation. And I have set a bunch of different things to happen based on the physical locationality of my phone. So if my phone is in portrait mode, it's going to open the action button, which is the one we just talked about earlier. If the device orientation is face up like it is now, it's gonna do the same thing, because face up and portrait are typically usually the same. If my orientation is face down, so the phone screen is on the table, it's going to turn silent mode on. If the, uh, oops, I did that twice. Whoops, a daisy, so let's just delete that. There we go. <laughs> if the device orientation is face down, it's not only going to turn silent mode on, but it's also going to set my media to 0% volume. 
So that's great. If I'm watching a video and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm busy, I'm getting a call, I just put my phone face down, I hold the action button, and it will turn silent mode on, and it will shut off the volume of whatever's playing back. Pretty neat. If my device orientation is landscape left, it will toggle my orientation lock on and off. Sometimes, I, I basically use rotation lock all the time. If I'm watching a video and I turn the phone sideways and nothing happens, now I can hold my action button and it goes, okay, your landscape left, let's turn the uh, rotation lock off and the video will go la landscape, which is pretty great. And then on the other side, if I tip the phone in the other direction like this, holding it like a camera and I hold down the action button, well, it will open up the camera app. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? So. Based on variables that you define, you can get your device to do a bunch of different things based on the state of the device. I'm going to upload all four of these into the uh, description below so you can open them up, you can toggle them, you can change them however you want, add your own applications, your own shortcuts. The world is really your oyster. Oh, one dumb thing I completely forgot about. If you've already got a bunch of shortcuts that you like and that's what you want to run from the action button, iOS 17 has a really beautiful way to display a shortcuts folder. So put all of those actions you want inside of a folder. I've called mine action button. And then go to the settings, select shortcut, and then just say show folder. And then my folder is called action button. So now when I hold that down, it just shows me a very attractive display of all the shortcuts that I can run from within that folder. It only shows seven. If you've got more than seven in there, you just click open app and it will open up that page uh, where all of your shortcuts are located. It's a good alternative. But Quinn, I don't have an iPhone 15 Pro with an action button. How do I get in on this action? Well, there's two ways. Open up the settings app and then go to accessibility. The first one I'm gonna show you is one you've probably already heard of. If you go into touch and then scroll down to the bottom, there's a section called back tap. And what this does is it literally waits for you to double tap with your finger the back of your iPhone's glass. Once you've done that, it will trigger anything you want it to. A system uh, toggle like flashlight or Siri or whatever, it can do accessibility stuff, but it can also, of course, do shortcuts. So I can map a double tap to the action menu, and as soon as I double tap my finger on the back glass, it will open up the action menu just like the action button. It won't do it right now because I have it in this elaborate mount and it doesn't work. But what I can show you is a way that will work when my phone is like this. And that is going back into the accessibility menu, but scrolling down to the very bottom to where it says accessibility shortcut. This allows you to triple click the side button on your iPhone to perform an action. Now, unfortunately, you can't natively program a shortcut to this function. But what you can do is a little goofy workaround. There's only one of these toggles that uses an app. And that app is Magnifier, which is again installed by default on every iPhone. You can delete this, and if you have, I always do, then this isn't gonna work. So you need to go back to the App Store, search Magnifier, you tap the cloud icon and it will reinstall on your device. And once you've done that, we can go into shortcuts and then we can go to automation. Automations are cool and I will show you why. So we're gonna add a new automation and we are basically going to say, hey, um, utilize an app. When an app is opened or closed, perform this action. So when an app is opened and we're going to set that to magnifier, done. Then run it immediately, don't notify me, just do it in the background. And then when magnifier is opened, we can choose it to run an action. So let's say I wanna do that uh, action menu. Um, action menu, okay, so. Check this out. When I triple click my, uh, my sleep wake button, it will open the magnifier app, which will then via automation, open up the magnifier shortcut menu. Here we go. Hey, now it is kind of goofy because the magnifier is literally open in the background, but eh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I recommend back tap for most people, but if back tap doesn't work for you because you have a case, this is a nice little workaround. If you're really smart, you can build some insane shortcuts. I'm not, and so I download everyone else's. <laughs> That's the great thing about shortcuts. I'm going to link all the ones that I use and love in the video description below, and I'll also share some websites where you can find some of your own because I'm just scraping the surface here. Let's start with DND menu. I turn on do not disturb all the time, like when I'm filming. The problem is I always forget to turn it off. So like seven hours later when everyone's like, I've been calling you and you didn't answer. I'm like, oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> and so what I can do here is I can say, hey, turn off do not disturb when my calendar event ends. Or I can say, turn off do not disturb at a specific time. I'm gonna say 3 p.m. So in 86 minutes, when I forget to turn uh, do not disturb off, it's gonna do it for me, which is fantastic. 
Shifter is amazing. I use this to set my alarm every single morning because I wake up at a different time every day. So I can say, I'd like to create one alarm and I would like it to be for 8.25 a.m. I push done and then at 8.25 a.m. Uh, the alarm is gonna go off. It asks me if I wanna repeat, I'm just gonna say no. And you can turn that off. I leave it on because I like it, but there's a bunch of settings. These are shortcuts, right? This isn't a program. You can go in there and just turn off and delete stuff that you don't need, which is cool. So now there's an alarm set for 8.25 a.m. The fantastic thing is when my 8.25 alarm goes off tomorrow, it will toggle off because it's not to be repeated. And then the next time I open Shifter tomorrow night, it's gonna say, hey, uh, would you like me to delete the last alarm that we set for 825? And I can say, yeah. And so the great thing is when I go into my alarm app, there isn't 50 bajillion alarms for every single minute of the day, like my wife. Um, it's just the one alarm that I've set and Shifter always cleans up after itself. It's amazing. Network tool is really pretty cool. I can run a speed test from here. I can test my ping to google.com. Hey, 30 milliseconds. I can see my local and my public IP, which is fantastic. I can uh, create a QR code to share uh, my Wi-Fi password with friends. It's really nerdy, but quite fun. Tip split and pay. This is one that I use every single, well, not every single day, but every time I eat out. I can go in here and I can uh, name the restaurant that I'm eating at. So let's say McDonald's. I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Although you can just skip that and it doesn't save it to the register, which is what I typically do. It says, how much is the damage? So $85 and uh, 47 cents. That was a lot of McDonald's. <laughs> I'm going to tip, uh, well, it's McDonald's, so I'm not gonna tip. And can you tip at McDonald's? I don't think, you can in the drive-thru. That's the only place I go. And uh, it's gonna say, do you wanna split the bill? Yeah, I've got four buddies with me in the car. Uh, three buddies, so there's four of us. Each person pays twenty-one thirty-seven. If you've got a tip, it'll tabulate that, tell you how much you need to tip each. And what's great about this is when I come in here, there is a receipt section. I'm not gonna show you this because it's all private. But the great thing about it is that I can see where I've eaten, how much it was, and how much I tipped. So I can reconcile that with my bank statement. I've had a few times where a waiter, perhaps by accident, perhaps on purpose, entered a very wrong amount. <laughs> and I was able to come with literal receipts <laughs> about uh, what I actually Actually, uh, what I actually intended to tip. Cool. Auto message. This one is crazy. And this is just entering the surface of really powerful uh, 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 shortcuts. So what I can do is I can come in here and say, create an individual message. Benjamin is sitting across the room from me. And so I am going to uh, choose a favorite contact because he is one of those. Aww. And then I'm going to say, what is the message I'd like to send to him? I'm gonna send him uh, poop. That might be an HR violation. And then when I'm in the bathroom, I can choose to take a picture of that. No, I don't do that, that's a joke. <laughs> that will upload my image to iCloud Drive and it hangs out there until the message wants to be sent. I don't even have a picture, so I'm just gonna say no. And then I choose when I would like to send it to him. I'm, so I'm gonna say uh, 2.39 p.m. I push done and this is crazy. It actually saves the message in raw text inside of reminders, if you can believe it. And then it saves the image inside of iCloud Drive. Then at 2.39, I'll get a notification that'll say, hey, um, you wanted to send Benjamin a message? And I'll just say, yep, send it. And it'll send everything that I had previously typed out to him. It's not truly automatic in the sense that it doesn't send it for you. You have to re-trigger that automation. However, excuse me, you have to re-trigger that shortcut. However, there is automations that you can set up to trigger that shortcut when a certain event happens. That's getting really nerdy and out into the weeds though, but now that I've just thought about it, that's pretty cool, I should explore it. Anyway, so I'll get a notification that'll say, hey, do you still wanna send a text message to Benjamin? I just click, yep, and it'll do it in the background. It sends what I typed previously, the image that I typed previously, and it's great, because if you don't wanna send someone a message at 12 a.m., but you don't wanna forget uh, you know, what you were gonna send them, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, new event. This one is super simple, but I love it. Uh, you just type raw text the event that you want, and I use Fantastical. So I can say um, bean party burrito. I should probably specify burritos. But anyway, I'm gonna put that in my personal calendar, and it's at 8 p.m. tonight. And I want to be reminded with an alarm 20 minutes before. I tap done, and check it out. It automatically adds all of that information into Fantastical and then closes the app. And it, it does it because I know the syntax of Fantastical. It has natural language processing. It's going to remind me it's in there. It's in the correct calendar. It's amazing. I love that one. Okay, Scan a Favorite. Scan is one of my favorite apps. It's free. Um, and what's great about it is it's free. <laughs> it's a document scanner. You put the document in front, scans the document. You can export it as PDF. You can mark it up. There's no in-app purchases. There's no uh, stupid ads. It is like legitimately completely free. And uh, that's a really great... Uh, 
a shortcut to immediately launch the scanner. Handy. Okay, this last one needs a little explanation. I'm Nike. We have one bathroom and it's on the main floor. Our bedroom is upstairs. We have a lot of windows. Problem, after you shower and you're naked, well, the whole neighborhood can see you. So what we do is there's automation set up from within Home Assistant to do this, but sometimes, you know, we're like, we didn't shower, we're just naked for fun. Um, and <laughs> I need to close the shades. What I can do is press I'm Nakey and the shades will close for 10 minutes. So what the shortcut actually does is it shuts all the shades, it waits 600 seconds, and then it reopens them. This is because I almost always forget to reopen them and then it's been like four hours and I'm like, it's dark in here and I'm sad. And it's because all the windows are closed because um, I was Nakey four hours ago. So I run that, close all the shades, 10 minutes later, it opens them all back up. Pretty cool. Okay. Those are just some of the action-y stuff that I use every day. Let me show you some of the crazier stuff. So I am going to go into Amazon and I am going to, it looks like I was looking at cat litter before. Sure, let's use this. I'm going to share this link with a shortcut that I have pinned to my share menu and it is called Amazon Price Tracking. It is going to use uh, Keepa and Camel 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 to create a combined chart of price history for this item. So I know if I'm getting a good deal. It's right here from within my shortcut. And then I'm like, okay, it's a bad deal right now. I'm not gonna buy it. It's really, 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 really great. Okay, here's another one. This one will blow your mind. YouTube, have you ever heard of it? There's this thing called YouTube DL. Um, and basically it downloads videos off the internet. <laughs> And if you don't pay for YouTube Premium or you want a video in a specific position, uh, let's choose this one because it's a minute 48. I don't know who Elizabeth Ann is, um, but I'm downloading her. Uh, oh, Parks and Rec. Perfect. So I'm going to go to Share, and then I'm going to open the Share menu, and then I'm going to click SWDLT. It's going to open a little command line app that I have installed on my iPhone, and I can just say Download Video in the default quality, and bada boom, bada bing, check this out. There's the video. I can copy it, I can paste it, I can share it with friends, I can airdrop it. Isn't that freaking awesome? Of course, pay for YouTube Premium, but if you don't, that's pretty neato. Um, those are mostly the things that I use on my share sheet. I have a link shortener that's just for me, that's kind of cool. If I have something copied or a web page, I can share that with my link shortener shortcut. That will shorten it for me in the background using an API key. That one I did build and I'm kind of proud of it, um, but you can have access because snazzy.fm is a private link shortener. Okay. Let me show you my last couple things. Um, one is using some AI wizardry. ChatGPT is all the rage and it's kind of, well, it's kind of dying down. I don't use these as much as I used to, but they can do some amazingly cool things. SGPT is my favorite version of ChatGPT for Siri because it's just super light and simple. But I can say, what do I want to ask? I'm gonna ask anything. It's just a ChatGPT prompt. It'll use API keys in the background to you know, get the response from OpenAI. But what is cool, is Federico Vitici and Max Stories, the guys that developed the shortcut, have it do stuff on the system, which is pretty cool. So I can say, create a playlist of 10 songs uh, that are from 2005 in the rap genre. I push done and it's gonna do its thing in the background. Beep, boop, bop, bop, bop. And now I enter the playlist name. I'm going to call it Yeah. I can come into uh, my music folder. I can go to library. I can go to playlists and check it out. Yeah. There you go. Kanye West. Oh man, that was a good era. There's 10 songs directly in my um, uh, music list that use the parameters that I specified. Super cool. Okay, this is something that could be done certainly with SGPT or Prime, but I have a lot of fun with it because you basically inside of the variables specify what's in your fridge. So right now I've got chicken, green onions, parsley, blue cheese, soy sauce, ketchup, eggs, tons of condiments, milk, salt, herbs, pepper, and spices. Then I press Chef GPT and it says, what are you in the mood for? And I'm gonna say, um, Italian food. And then it will generate a recipe based on the ingredients that you have in your fridge right now. Isn't that wild? So it says, here's recipe one, stuffed chicken breast with blue cheese and green onion. Recipe two, creamy blue chicken cheese pasta with parsley and crispy chicken. Recipe three, blue cheese and green onion stuffed meatballs in ketchup soy glaze. No thanks. I'm gonna say recipe two. Check this out. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'm drawing on it now. Isn't that bananas? So it tells you how high to heat your oven, how what to cook, how the ingredients, how to mix them. It's crazy. It's a recipe on your phone in seconds. 
The last thing I wanna show you that's really cool are my dynamic battery wallpapers, and those use shortcut automations. Word of warning, I'm seeing a lot of people that are mapping stuff to the action button that frankly should just be done automatically in the background. If you have a menu that's like seven levels deep that's triggered by the action button, what's the convenience of the action button at that point? Um, and, and why are you doing stuff manually that you could do without even thinking about it. I give an example of my rotation lock settings. I have a setting that says when any of these three apps are opened, um, turn rotation lock off. And those three apps are YouTube, Plex, and uh, uh, Photos, which are the apps that I basically view all my video in. So check it out, rotation lock is on right now, but when I go into Photos, rotation lock will be turned off. Then when I exit photos, rotation lock turns back on. It's great because I never even have to think about it. It's automated, completely done in the background. Think about automations and what should be automated and then do it. Okay, the last example I wanna give is this neato thing. So I've got lock screens, tons of them. Watch this, I'm gonna plug in power to the bottom of my phone and my lock screen will change based on what's happening on the device. So in from a green smiley face to a yellow charging face. And when it gets below 20%, my lock screen will turn red with crosses over its eyes to indicate that, uh-oh, your battery's low. There are a lot of things that you can do with automations that I would strongly suggest you consider. Um, and that's just shortcuts in general. Go down to the links that I've provided in the video description below. There's a lot more things that I haven't even talked about that do even more than you would think. Like this advanced low power mode, this thing is nuts. So you turn this thing on and it like shuts basically everything off. When my phone gets below like 5%, I'll turn this on and this thing can go for hours. This is way more advanced than low power mode on the iPhone. It even turns, because I'm connected to Wi-Fi, it even turns off cellular data. And then as soon as I hop off uh, Wi-Fi, cellular data will turn back on. This thing is crazy, crazy powerful. And there are so many shortcuts that do so much. It's a cool hobby. It'll take over your life. Go check them out especially using the action button. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. Okay. Cool. Uh.